Hello and welcome. As you can see, this video is about a whole bunch of challenges that all overlap in some way and require only a little to be said, but I still wanted to go through them. Some of them have been requested in comments, might as well group them up like this. Oftentimes there are things I want to say about a challenge, but there isn't enough material to dedicate an entire video to only one of them. To give fair warning, I wouldn't consider this a very advanced guide. There's a good chance many of you have figured out all of these challenges already. With the other guides I've made so far, I tried to include something extra. Maybe something that required research and calculations, so even if you go into it thinking you know the challenge pretty well, you might end up learning something anyway. I don't think this will be that type of video. Not to say it's complete garbage, I am making it for a reason. I have some things I want to recommend for all these challenges that might help some people who are approaching them wrong, because it is very possible to interpret these challenges incorrectly and believe that they're much harder than they really are, so this video is here for that. With that weird justification out of the way, how about these challenges? I'm mainly looking at those five in the title, but there are many that are similar that you can apply similar advice to. Step one is really easy, one thing that these challenges all have in common is of course going to the two big challenge hunting questions I love so much. Is it easier to do in hardcore or on shipment? Well, shipment makes all these challenges pretty easy I think. If it involves an explosion or a multi-kill or rapid kills, there's a good chance shipment is your best bet. Like combine all those things and you get the challenge carpet bomb, five kills with a single airstrike. That sounds pretty fluky and rare on any other map, but you can loop those things around on shipment if you play it right. By the way, the five kills with a single airstrike, it doesn't mean in one pass of the airstrike. You don't actually need to get a pentakill medal or anything. Here I got a triple kill, then on the second run nothing, and then another triple kill, and that counts for carpet bomb. Just needs to be over five in the entire airstrike. Anyway, the five title challenges are no different. Shipment is very helpful. What they also all have in common is that it is easy to be fooled and think that you need to rely on enemy involvement and luck, when in reality you can do it all yourself. Now I'll just step through these five challenges and show you what I mean. How about Hot Potato? 15 kills with thrown back grenades. I mean, people throw a lot of grenades on shipment, you even spawn on them all the time, quality map design right there. But this challenge might be kinda tough if you need to be jumping on enemy grenades all the time, hoping they didn't cook them before throwing. Haha, -ha, no, that's all wrong. You don't need to throw back an enemy grenade. Just throw your own grenade on the ground directly below you, then pick it up and throw it again. Simple and easy. And if you have frag times three unlocked, plus sonic boom, even better, plus shipment. And I think you can see how this challenge flies by. You're basically just getting 15 grenade kills, which can easily happen in one game. Now you can see what I mean by how a challenge can become incredibly easy if you just know that one thing about it. And I'm sure that is something some people didn't realize you could do. You can see I'm earning the return to sender medal for doing it that way and it is of course counting towards the challenge. I can totally understand why somebody would assume that wouldn't work because it does say a thrown back grenade implying you're throwing it back once it came and the medal is even worse return to sender directly implying you are returning the grenade to the sender which you are obviously not doing because you are the original sender. Anyway there's that challenge there's got to be someone out there who didn't know that's how you can get it done. Moving on though how about dominoes that sounds Sounds like kind of a tough thing to get done. Again, might be easy to think you need to rely on enemies throwing down C4 and claymores and you need to get a lucky grenade or airstrike dominoes kill, but there's no need for all that luck. All you need is to have two different types of explosive on your class, and that is easy to accomplish by running the C4 or claymore perk yourself. You can absolutely get both to work, but I would definitely recommend C4, and you'll have your one free frag grenade automatically to set off the explosion. There are a couple good ways to get this one done. One way is to just be throwing out a bunch of C4 like this, one on the left, one on the right, to create what I'll call a C4 trap, and then you throw your grenade right in the middle of the two C4s to blow the whole thing up and hope somebody is nearby, which isn't too unlikely thanks to the magic of shipment. It is possible that somebody runs right in the middle and you might get the kill with the grenade. That won't count for dominoes and that's too bad, but if they're on the edges, the C4 will be what kills them and that is all you need to do for the challenge. It would be great to have an RPG or even an underbarrel grenade launcher to set off the trap much faster but of course you can't put those things on your class without getting rid of the C4. It's much harder to use claymores because they're not omnidirectional and they will blow themselves up when someone walks by and you have to plant them instead of throwing them and you'll probably die while doing so. Yeah, you, maybe you can see why C4 is the better option. But claymores can be done, if you're curious, mostly by doing the second method that I'll cover now. The traps are pretty effective, but there is another way I should mention you can get another type of explosive on your class, aside from the one free frag grenade, and that is with the martyrdom perk. This gives you another chance to complete the challenge because let's imagine you die while trying to set up your C4 trap thing. The C4 in your hand will likely drop to the ground along with that live martyrdom 
them grenade. Now, because they're right next to each other, the chances are kind of 50-50 whether or not the C4 is the closer thing to the person to kill them and give you the challenge credit, if it kills them at all. But by putting martyrdom on your class and running around with C4, you have created an enhanced martyrdom. Not quite javelin dumb, but it is another interesting way to complete the challenge. All you have to do is not respawn right away, because respawning will make your C4 or Claymore disappear off the map. You just have to watch the kill cam until you hear that hit marker sound, and you should hear that hit marker sound even if you don't hit anybody, assuming somebody else didn't already shoot your C4, because that hit marker you get is usually just telling you that your grenade blew up your own C4, even if nobody was harmed. So there are two methods that can definitely work for dominoes. It isn't very hard if you focus on it. You can usually get two or three in a shipment game, and you need, what, five total? No big deal. As for that Claymore example I said I wanted to tie in, here it is. I'm in Kill Confirmed to be an evil person because that encourages enemies to run towards my tag when they kill me. I have these two Claymores planted around myself defensively there. I died with martyrdom and waited before hitting respawn. Sure enough, that grenade set off both the Claymores and got me a kill with that funny explosive contraption. That's what I got for the Domino's Challenge, and doing Domino's will also be earning you Counter C4 or Counter Claymore, two other challenges I wanted to touch on. Of course, there are easier ways to complete these ones. Why try to use other explosives to set them off when, for this challenge, you can just shoot them? Again, the misconception might be that you need to shoot an enemy C4 or an enemy Claymore, which would be really difficult, but no, you can shoot your own equipment, don't worry. There's only one challenge like that for shooting an enemy C4, Return to Sender, yep, the same name as the medal for throwing back a grenade, except this time you really do need to return it to the sender, and that one is a really tough challenge, despite only needing three and not ten. There's nothing much I can tell you about that one, because the hard part about it is people not using C4. Nothing you can do. I mean, I give people this challenge all the time by throwing C4 in their face. I'm just waiting for somebody to do the same back to me. I mean, I got a kill shooting an enemy Claymore one time. Arguably harder to pull off, but there's no challenge for that. I won't say unfortunately, because I definitely don't want to do that two more times. For these two counter equipment challenges though, the same thing applies where you basically just set up a trap with C4 and Claymores. You really don't need shipment as much for these. Dominoes needed to be timed with a frag grenade, so shipment is much more important. With these two, you can set up a trap on any map and aim at it, waiting to fire until someone comes walking by. Shipment is just so high traffic that you can be done with it really quickly. So throw down your explosive and aim at it. One good spot is in that main camping container in the middle of the map, although you might notice one problem. Damn it, that was a perfect opportunity, and that could have been a Claymore double kill, speaking of another good shipment challenge, Claymore. But the goddamn aim assist dragged my aim towards the running people and away from the Claymore. That wasn't me, I didn't move the joystick at all. So maybe you should move up really close to the Claymore so that you can't miss it, but that wouldn't work as well when you're aiming at a C4 you threw because it should be farther away, and in the case of the C4, the aim assist can really mess you up when somebody runs in front or runs by, so I recommend disabling the auto aim for this challenge if you're really wanting to get it done. It was getting incredibly annoying when I was just trying to work around it and deal with it. You don't realize how bad the auto aim can be until you're trying not to hit the enemy, like goddamn, just aiming right at my C4 waiting for somebody to run by. Ah, what the fuck, what the Fuck. I really could not control the aim there to just shoot the C4 one time. But please do remember, you might want that aim assist back on after you're done with the challenge. I played a few games afterwards doing really terribly whiffing all the time before realizing I left it off, and most people are used to the aim assist on consoles. So there are two more challenges you can complete really quickly, the counter C4, counter Claymore stuff. This was my final counter C4 kill right here. But wait a minute, what happened there? How the one? What do you know, that's the final challenge I planned on talking about today. Another one that when you read it, get a kill shooting an explosive through a wall. Sounds kinda complicated, god damn, do I need to get the bomb squad perk on to be alerted about explosives through walls? Well, of course not. Bomb Squad will not be nearly as helpful as just having your own C4. If this challenge required you to have Bomb Squad, oh god, that would be tough. But for some reason, there are no Bomb Squad challenges at all, not even something like destroy 50 enemy explosives. Anyway, for how the blank, now you do the same thing as you did for Counter C4, except make sure to have some sort of material between you and the explosive. It doesn't have to be a literal wall, of course, it can be any type of material. The important part is the bullet penetration. You can just scratch that part out right there. 
Like in the first example I showed, I got that because I shot the C4 through the person. No wall involved. That one was all thanks to having the aim assist off for sure, otherwise I definitely would have whiffed the C4. Anyway, again, you can do this on any map, pretty much anywhere, depending on how patient you are. Just throw it down and find something to shoot through. These examples are not that great, it isn't like I went through every map to find the best locations to shoot through a surface, because they're everywhere. You can find any old place to shoot through a corner, or a table leg, or a brick. Doesn't matter, you can camp it out on whatever map, or you can have some fun on shipment and get it done in a jiffy. Of course, I definitely recommend having a high penetration weapon as well as deep impact. No reason not to improve your odds and be able to shoot through thicker things at sharper angles, and then do things like this. Bop, there's one, shoot through the containers, shoot through the corners. There's another one right there, a little bit lucky, but no problem with that. I will note these dumpsters are all butter, you can shoot right through all of them. And I was running out of time at the end here, but aha, there we go, one final one, and there you go, I just did the rest of that challenge that I needed in one game after I made it my active goal, and I am not special, you can do the same thing, there is a bit of luck to it, so maybe not in one game, but you can see the challenge is really nothing to worry about when you take the right approach to it. Well then, I've covered those five challenges that I wanted to discuss, all very shipment related, and all perhaps much simpler than they appear. Maybe not a needed guide for everyone, but if you're still here, hopefully it was helpful to you, and for the people who watch these things to the very end, because you're most likely to care about a random update, obviously as things get busy for me again coming off the break, I will have less time than ever before for the next while until maybe late April-ish, so the challenge guides will definitely be slowing back down. A lot more people than I would have expected have asked if I will be playing through the Infinite Warfare campaign, and I am considering it. I have not touched Infinite Warfare, I know nothing about it, I have not been told anything, I have not read or watched anything, so even though it's already 2017, that might be a very fun thing to do. Only the campaign, I mean, because it's either that or a period of being pretty inactive. Well, I'll make a decision on that at some point. Thanks for watching this video, though. I will catch you next time.